Please enjoy this compilation of joy exuding from my body when opening these packages. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, it's so exciting. Yes. I'm so excited. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. This book is... Why is this book so heavy? Oh, okay. Y'all are going to be like, what in the world, Lydia? What in the world? My mom's going to watch this and be like, why did you get that? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be doing a huge Amazon book haul. You can't see everything, but I have one, two, three boxes and two bags. <laughs> I know I should not justify my purchases, but I will right now. I had a bunch of gift cards to Amazon and I also wanted to buy books as a graduation gift for myself. I graduated college in May and it's July, so I pondered what I wanted to do for myself and I thought, you know what, why not buy books? <laughs> I don't need any more books at all, but I wanted more. I woke up one morning in bed and thought, I'm gonna order all the books that I want today. I think I blacked out, obviously, because I ordered over 20 books and I don't even remember most of the books I ordered. So this is gonna be a surprise for me and a surprise for you. I've held off filming this video until I had all the packages and they've just been sitting in my room staring at me. So now I'm so excited to open them. Like I said, I have no idea what's here. So let's just get into it. I'll start with the bags. Number one, why do they make these bags so difficult to tear? Should have brought scissors. One thing you should know about me is I'm terrible at opening any package, any card, anything. I'm terrible at it. There we go. What is this? Oh yes. Okay. So this is Life and Death. This is Twilight Reimagined. I think this is the gender switch. Yeah, it is. Okay. The original Twilight is about a boy named Edward who's a vampire and a girl named Bella who's a human. This is gender switch. So this is about a boy named Bo? Beaufort? Bo. Beaufort? I think. B-E-A-U-F-O-R-T. I'm gonna call him Beau. Beaufort or Beaufort. Still have no idea. Beaufort or Beaufort. Okay, Emma. Emma says I got it. Not really though. Beau is equivalent to Bella, but boy is a boy. Beau is a boy. That's hard. And then Edith, who is equivalent to Edward. So it's Beau, who is a man. I shouldn't say man. Beau is a boy who meets Edith, who is a girl vampire. That was a really long-winded way of saying it. I wanna read all the Twilight books. I've read all the original Twilight books, but I wanna read the extra books that Marissa Meyer came out with. Not Marissa Meyer, Stephanie Meyer. I've heard the gender switch is really good. I think it'll be interesting to see the boy meet the girl who's a vampire. Hmm, next book. Archer's Boys! Oh, I'm really excited to read this one. I have since been informed that this book is not about what I thought it was. I don't know if I'll read it anymore. <laughs> My cousin Mia is dying laughing right now. I know she is, but <laughs> I was under the impression it was about a boy who was deaf and I went on to talk about how I really like sign language and I'm a nerd about the deaf community. I am really interested in the deaf community and sign language. Looking back at that footage, I just seem like a complete dum-dum <laughs> because that's not what this book is about. So I don't know if I'll read it anymore, but I figured I'd throw this in for kicks and giggles for Mia, you're welcome. Now I'm on to the boxes. Okay. <gasps> yes. <laughs> Look at this beautiful box. Oh, filled with so many goodies. Okay, first things first. I am just, I am so beyond excited to read this book. This is What Happens After Midnight. This is by the same author of The Summer of Broken Rules. I absolutely devoured and loved The Summer of Broken Rules. Purple's my favorite color. We have purple cover, one of my favorite books, is written by this author. Okay, so she's joining the senior class jester who's in charge of the end of year prank. The jester is Taggart. I'm assuming that's the love interest. Oh, he's her ex-boyfriend. Oh, it seems like a fun high school adventure following clues and doing pranks. This is just gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Next. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for both of these. These are in the same world. I need to read When, when in Rome first and Practice Fix Perfect second. Sarah Adams quickly becoming one of my favorite authors. She writes cute, cheesy, really sweet, wholesome romances. When in Rome is about a pop star who wants to just take a break and she wants to go to Rome, but the closest Rome is Rome, Kentucky. So she goes to the small town, her car breaks down, she meets Sky. It's just a small town romance, but there's 
there's also a celebrity in it. I love the one of us is a celebrity or one of us is famous trope because I think it's really interesting to see that side, see the celebrity world, but also see how it impacts your relationships. And I think he's uh, the owner of a pie shop. Please, yes, please. The second book, seems more up my alley. If you've watched my videos, you know it's really out of character for me, but I really like the bad boy in any book. Not in real life, we don't go for that in real life, but in any book, any brooding guy who has a sweet side to him, yes please. <laughs> I'm so ashamed. <laughs> but the cover just screams good girl, bad boy. And I hope it is giving that. I've heard this is sort of like fake dating where he takes her on dates to help her get used to dating. I've heard mixed reviews about this though. Some people say it's too cheesy and she's a little cringy, but some people really like it. I have read one Emily Henry book before. I read People We Meet on Vacation. It just wasn't my favorite, but I've heard really good things about other books from her and I definitely wanna try it out. I've heard mixed reviews on book lovers. The back is really not giving me much information. They are thrown together in interesting circumstances. I'm excited to read this one, but I am more excited to read Beach Read. This is the book I've heard people rave about. So many booktubers say it's a five-star read, one of their favorites. This is where two authors meet each other and decide to switch genres and they have to write a book of the other person's genre. I've heard the guy in this book just does some super sweet things that I am ready. I'm ready to figure out what in the world he does. It's so sweet. Also, the covers of her books are just so pretty. I will say when I read People We Meet on Vacation, it was a really quick, easy read. I liked her writing style. The story just was not for me. Oh, why is there a box inside of the box? That's weird. Hallelujah, and it's Midnight Sun, whoop whoop. This is Twilight from Edward's perspective. She's chunky, wow. I love Twilight, like I said, and this one is Twilight, but from Edward's perspective. I love a dual point of view in a book. I love seeing the guy's perspective and the girl's perspective, and all the books are told from Bella's perspective, I believe. One of my friends told me it's really, really good. I was like, why is it so long? And she reminded me, he doesn't sleep. Edward never sleeps because he's a vampire. You don't ever get a break. He never goes to bed. We learn more about his past too. Okay, good. We need more of Edward's past. We need more Edward. Okay, what's next? Oh, more vampire diaries. I mean, not, why do I keep saying vampire diaries? Twilight. This is a short novella based on one of the characters in, I believe, Eclipse. Okay, this was a newly turned vampire that was first introduced in the novel Eclipse. It's called The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner. I just want to read the whole Twilight saga. It might not be worth the money I spent, but oh well. I'm just like overwhelmingly excited. Can you feel the joy exuding through your screen? Oh my goodness. This book is, why is this book so heavy? No, I'm gonna have to read this on my Kindle probably. This is the first book in the Boys of Tommen series. <laughs> this is so heavy. This is ridiculous. Okay, 601 pages. People weren't kidding when they said the font was small. Oh my goodness, look at the font. Yikes. Also, the covers are really cringy to me, but I did not get any of the special edition covers when they came out. And I think the newer covers are coming out soon, but I didn't really want to wait. I've heard that it's more of a character study rather than plot driven. And I haven't read a ton of those books. I really do like plot driven books, but Destiny Sidwell raved about this series. And then I watched Sarah Corley read it and she had mixed feelings. <laughs> so I just want to know what I think about it. I already see language though, so I might not love it because it does look like a goodness like a ton of language every page i've gone to there's a lot of language okay lydia might not be your best moment buying this i do believe there's a huge trigger warning for domestic violence oh look this is author's note i appreciate that they write, put this in a book because of its explicit content graphic violence mature themes triggers and bad language it is suitable for readers of 18 and up i really appreciate when an author's note gives the age rating and what we should expect because i think that's really important if you're just going to pick up a book and then give it to a 14 year old like this is not appropriate for them the font on the back looks very early 2000s though this is so heavy. <laughs> like, I don't even know. Okay. Now moving on to the last box, which is the heaviest box. Oh, on the top it says 11 pounds. Yes, this is an 11 pound box filled with books. But yeah, we're just gonna rip it apart. 
Let's just start with the first one I can grab. Okay, okay. This is the Winter in Paradise Trilogy by Ellen Hildebrand. The Paradise Trilogy, excuse me. Winter in Paradise, What Happens in Paradise, Troubles in Paradise. Honestly, it just looks like a really good summary read. Ellen Hildebrand is the queen of summer books. I don't even know what these are about, to be honest. I think they just be good. <laughs> Oh, okay. I have been in a fantasy mood. I got the Cruel Prince trilogy. I think there's another. Oh, the Folk of the Year trilogy. The first book is the Cruel Prince. Second book is the Wicked King. And the third book is the Queen of Nothing. I've heard very mixed reviews on these books. People say it's very misleading when you say it's a fantasy romance because there's not a lot of romance in it. But then other people say there is a lot of romance. I don't understand how that can be possible. How do some people think there's romance and some people not think there's romance? There's either romance or there isn't. I need to know for myself what in the world they're talking about. I don't know why. It just reminds me of the Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah. Okay. It just seems like something C.S. Lewis would have written. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'll read these in the summer because I feel like a lot of fantasy books are good for fall time, but if I'm in a fantasy mood, I might go ahead and read them. Let's see what the first one's about. This is not giving me much. Jude was seven when her parents were murdered and she and her two sisters were stolen away to live in the treacherous high court of fairy. Ten years later, Jude wants nothing more than to belong there, but many of the fae despise humans, especially Prince Cardin, the youngest and wickedest son of the high king. To win a place at the court, Jude must defy him and face the consequences. Seems like your typical fantasy read where you have to defy the court or the king, but you know what? I still want to read them. <laughs> They're less than 400 pages, which is really good for a fantasy book. It seems like a quicker fantasy series to read. The next book I have seen everywhere. I've always picked it up almost at every bookstore. Every time I go in Barnes & Noble, I pick it up if it's there at Target. I always picked it up but every time I've looked at the price in store versus on Amazon I always put the book back down because it was so much cheaper on Amazon and it really was cheaper on Amazon this is tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow I don't know why I didn't share the title with you before I started talking this is a very different genre than I will typically go for it's about two friends who create a video game it spans over 30 years Haley Pham said this was a really good book I don't play video games I don't know anything about video games I don't know think she plays a lot of video games either but she still said she really enjoyed it here is another Emily Henry book. I got Happy Place by Emily Henry. This is her most recent release. I've heard this book's very different from all of her other books. This one is deeper, I believe. From what I have gathered from all the videos I have watched on YouTube talking about this book, there's a friend group who always goes on vacation together. Two of them have just recently broken up with each other. Well, they were in a relationship and then they just recently broke up, but they don't want to tell their friends to ruin the trip. So they go on the trip still pretending to be dating. If it is a little bit of fake dating, I love fake dating. I've also heard there's just deeper meaning behind these books. It's more of a general fiction book with a subplot of romance. The covers are just beautiful. It seems a very simple summary read. Once again, all of her books seem really good summary reads. Okay, y'all are gonna be like, what in the world, Lydia? What in the world? <laughs> My mom's gonna watch this and be like, why did you get that? That Billy Summers by Stephen King. I was influenced by Haley Pham on YouTube. She read this and she loved it. I do not like scary books, scary movies. I read thriller books, but I just feel like it's different. I don't like horror books or horror movies. He's known for writing horror books and he's known for his horror movies as well. This is not a horror book because I don't think I could do that. This is more of a crime book, and I do like books that talk about crime. Any good mystery, murder mystery, I will watch it on TV, I will read about it. This is a pretty big book though. How big are you? Oh, it's not that bad. It's about 500 pages. I don't really know why I put this up. I was easily influenced, and I just thought I should pick it up because all my other books are fantasy or romance. I just needed to switch it up on my Amazon order. I was like, you know what? I need some crime books in here. Let's hit this book that I've seen Haley Van read. <laughs> Has my address really been in the back for the whole time? I wonder if you can read it though. Yes, you could, and that's why the black box has been there for most of the video. Good job, Lydia. The last set I got is the Six of Crows duology. These are the books that come after the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I'm currently reading Shadow and Bone right now. Okay. These are pretty books. Six of Crows is the first book. I've heard it's more about a heist, this group of people that you wouldn't think would normally hang out with each other come together to pull off this heist. Basically, it's about a guy named Kaz who is offered a chance at a deadly heist that could make him rich beyond his wildest dreams, but he can't pull it off alone. Kaz's crew are the only ones who might stand between the world and destruction if they don't kill each other first. I think it's going to be a really interesting fantasy to read with a good found family aspect to it as well. I really do like when friends become family in books. I just think it's beautiful. Beautiful. I don't know if that's the right word, but I just really like it. Well, there you go. Do you think I got enough? Probably not. <laughs> There's probably more to come. <laughs> no, I can't do that to myself. I can't do that to my bank account. Now I can't find my phone for the Bible verse of the day. I got it. ESPN Alcaraz cruises to victory. 
good for him. The Bible verse I want to talk about today is Galatians 5.13. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. We have been given the chance to accept Jesus as Christ as our Savior and to live in the freedom of the love that Jesus gives us, but we aren't just supposed to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and then stop doing things. We're supposed to use that love that he's given us and use him as an inspiration to continue to be more and more like him and to serve others with love and with genuine empathy for other people. And this is a beautiful reminder of that. I really hope you enjoyed this video and maybe it inspired you for some new books that you want to read. If you read any of them, you can comment them down below and let me know what you think. Or if you have any book recommendations, anything at all, you can comment it down below. I hope I'll have a wonderful, wonderful day and be a blessing to others today. Bye guys.